Paying employees in any business is a difficult task, and it could be extremely stressful if you don't know what you're doing, mostly because there's three sides of paying your employees correctly. Number one, determining how much to pay them in the first place. Number two, not only paying them, but designing a comp plan to actually motivate them to work hard and retain them. And number three, compliance, which is making sure you're paying them correctly to avoid big hefty tax penalties from the government. I've been through it all, from trying to figure out how to do payroll for my very first employee, to trying to figure out how much I should pay my employees in general. And I suffered the consequences of getting this wrong. I've paid thousands of dollars in payroll tax penalties, I've lost employees, and I've lost a lot of money. Luckily, we were able to flip this around in our companies and create systems to not only hire employees, but also incentivize them to work towards our business objectives as well. That's why in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to do this in your business so you don't make the same mistakes I made. Hi, my name is Sherman, a CPA with Life Accounting, a full service accounting firm that helps small businesses grow and manage their finances. In this episode, I'm going to go over employee compensation, the different types of employee compensation, and the easiest way to start paying your employees if you're doing it for the first time. If you're looking for ways to pay your employees or you're hiring an employee for the first time and just don't know where to start, this video was made for you. By the way, if you're new to our channel, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content that can help you grow your business. Also, if you extract any value from this video at all, please help me out by hitting the like button below. We put out so much content every single week and your likes is what helps us to continue to push this content out to help you grow. All right, now let's talk about how to pay your employees. I remember when I first hired my first employee. Well, at least I thought they were an employee anyway. It was when we first started our first company, Life Marketing. When we first started our business, we couldn't hire any employees like most bootstrapped small businesses. And when we did start making some money, the very first group of people we hired were interns. We hired some college students as interns and paid them a few hundred dollars a month to help us with some of our client projects. Eventually, this evolved into us needing someone full-time, so we did away with the internship program and hired a single full-time person to absorb their responsibilities. At the time, we could only afford to pay that person $10 an hour. Now, with this full-time person, you're probably thinking that they were a full-time employee. Well, in the beginning, we did as well. But no, we learned that this person was actually an independent contractor. Because we had no payroll system at the time and was literally paying this person by check, this person was not a W-2 employee. This meant that their wages were not taxed at all. So if they made $1,600 a month, that's the exact amount that went into their bank account. And while that might sound good in theory, it did not sound so good when tax time came. Because they were a contractor, they received a 1099 at the end of the tax year and ultimately had to pay taxes all at once to the IRS instead of piece by piece with W-2 wages. Obviously that wasn't ideal, so we converted this person into a W-2 employee, and then as we grew as a company, we were able to increase our wages to match that of our market. And now we're doing so much better. So there are a few things to unpack here that my clients ask me all the time. Number one, what's the difference between an independent contractor and an employee? Number two, what's the easiest way to set up a payroll system for employees? And number three, what is the best way to set up compensation plans to motivate your employees? All right, so let's dig in. What is the difference between an independent contractor and an employee? An independent contractor provides specific services to your company as defined by a written contract. Independent contractors might be freelancers, consultants, or any company or individual you choose to hire for a specific job. Now, when you hire an independent contractor, they generally have complete control over how they perform the job that you hired them to do. The moment when you start controlling the way they perform the work, then technically they are an employee. According to the IRS, a worker is an employee when the business has the right to direct and control the work performed by the worker. 
The worker is also an employee if you have financial control or provide employment type benefits to that person, such as insurance or tools to perform their job. An employee is an individual who works for your business. You provide all the tools, training, benefits, and other items that they need to perform their job. But most importantly, you have control over the end product. If you hire a contractor, they must complete a W-9 form and receive a 1099 form at the end of the tax year if you want the expenses you paid them to be tax deductible. If you hire an employee, then they must complete a W-4 form and then receive a W-2 at the end of the tax year to report their wages, taxes paid, and other items. To learn more about this, then check out our video on 1099 versus W-2 employees. Now, let's move on to the next major question, which is, what is the easiest way to set up a payroll system to pay your employees? Let me first describe the payroll process. When you hire an employee, you must pay payroll taxes. The employee is taxed and the employer is taxed as well. So in order to do this, you need to do a few things first. Number one, you need to have a federal identification number, also known as an EIN for your business. You can set this up online with the IRS if you already do not have one. Number two, you need to set up a state income tax account number. You can set this up on your state departments of revenues website. And then number three, you need a state unemployment account number. You can set this up on your state departments of labor's website. Each department will require monthly or quarterly tax payments and tax filings at a specific frequency. You should be familiar with them to make sure you comply with those requirements. And if you don't, you could end up paying big tax penalties. Now, in the old days, employers had to do this entire process manually. Imagine keeping up with all the tax payments, tax filings, and mailing this to each department separately. Or I guess you could have hired an accountant to do this for you. But if that accountant is anything like us, they probably don't want anything to do with it. Not because we don't want to help, it's not that necessarily, but it's because there are many payroll tools that can do this for you automatically. All you have to do is set up the correct accounts that I mentioned with each department that you're liable to, and then connect those account numbers to a very specific payroll system. Then, if you choose the right payroll provider, they will automatically calculate your payroll taxes, pay them on your behalf, and file your payroll taxes each month or quarter. When I first started doing payroll, I tried to do everything myself. I logged into each department's website to try to file my payroll taxes electronically, and I did my very best to stay on top of it. But well, one time I was late by just one day and I received a tax penalty for over $1,000. And ever since that day, I completely automated my payroll process so that I did not have to worry about that ever again. Now, there are several full service payroll providers out there like ADP, Gusto, and QuickBooks full service payroll, just to name a few of the popular ones. And if you wanna know which one I use, I have been using QuickBooks full service payroll which has been working perfectly well for me and automatically syncs with my accounting system. Anyway, choose whichever works best for you and your business, but make sure that you automate this process so it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg down the line. All right, now let's move on to the last, but possibly the most important aspect you need to consider, how to create compensation plans for your employees. How you pay your employees will determine how much of your talent you will retain in your company. So in order to do this correctly, you need to determine the best methods to pay your employees, whether that be with hourly pay or salary pay or with commissions, bonuses, or profit sharing. Let's quickly discuss the differences and the things that you need to consider. We'll start with hourly pay. Hourly pay is one of the simplest ways to pay your employees. They log time and you pay them a flat rate per hour to perform the job. With hourly pay, you have to keep overtime in mind. When you hire full-time employees, they may take longer to do their job to try to rack up their pay. In addition, many high-skilled workers don't love hourly pay. They'd rather receive a fixed salary to deliver specific results to your company, regardless of if it takes 35, or 45 hours per week. Regardless, hourly pay does have its place for many straightforward positions that are not super complicated. 
Now let's talk about salary pay. Salaries are fixed payments to your employees for performing their job. Salaries are normally used to hire for highly skilled jobs. It's also a very simple way to pay your employees. And you don't have to keep track of employee hours and time logs in order to do this. Now, there is a fundamental flaw with salary pay, and that is motivation. In the words of Dave Ramsey, salary is the most boring way to pay people. Paying your employees by salary could result in your employees becoming unmotivated, lazy, or just doing the bare minimum to receive their paycheck. With that said, a hybrid model is normally recommended. You should try to pay your salary-based employees with not just a fixed salary payment, but also with some bonuses or commissions that will motivate them to work harder to reach your business objectives. So then, let's discuss commissions and bonuses. As an example, think about the sales profession. Most sales jobs are a blend of salary and commission, or just flat out commission based. Now this makes sense for the sales rep because you're ultimately paying them to generate sales. And if they aren't generating sales for you, then they are effectively useless in your company. Now with this in mind, you may design commissions or bonuses to incentivize your full-time employees that are not sales reps as well. You should design incentive plans around the KPIs or key performance indicators that drive your business results. And if you do not know what your business KPIs are, then check out my video on small business KPIs. In short, every single job in your business should be connected to a quantifiable result. Then you can create bonus-based pay for your employees to hit that quantifiable result that is also contributing to your business growth. For example, if you're hiring a customer service rep, then that KPI for that job might be customer satisfaction. If your employee hits a certain level of customer satisfaction, then you might have a big bonus for them for hitting that target. Now, let's move on to the ultimate incentive to unify your whole company, which is profit sharing. Profit sharing or revenue sharing is a single incentive that can unify and motivate your entire company to work towards your business goals. The purpose of profit sharing plans is to get everyone in your company feeling like a partner in your business. They essentially have some skin in the game to be able to look at your business from your eyes and not as someone who's just coming into work to pick up a paycheck. Now, while profit sharing is a great incentive, you need to design it in a way that your employees do not feel so entitled to it. And because there are so many ways to set up profit sharing plans, we'll save that for another episode. So be sure to subscribe to our channel. For many businesses just starting out, you probably won't be able to afford a profit sharing right off the bat. But as you grow and start hiring irreplaceable people like executives and managers in your company, you'll probably want to consider having this in place as a way to motivate them and retain them for their loyalty to your company. So that's the various types of compensation, hourly pay, salary pay, bonuses, commissions, and profit sharing. The last thing we need to discuss is how much you should actually pay your employees. They say in order to be rich, you have to always have three times more money than what you already have today. And while I don't know if this is necessarily true or not, what I do know is as a business owner, your employees will demand more money from you. And no matter how much you pay them, they will always want more and more as they grow in their career path, especially your top talent. If they don't feel like they have the ability to grow in your company, they might jump back into the job market to find growth opportunities elsewhere. So what can you do? The best thing you could do is to find out the market rate for the positions you're seeking to hire in your company. That way, if an employee is demanding more money than anyone else is willing to pay for them to do the same job, you can confidently reject your employee's demand for more money. And if they don't like it and go into the job market, they'll be met with similar or lower payment options than they thought they were worth in the first place. On the flip side, you also need to make sure that you're not underpaying your employees and paying them below the market rate. Because if you're paying them below the market, then it'll be very easy for someone to just message your employees on LinkedIn and the next day they'll be leaving your company to join someone else. And it happens. I can't count how many times it's happened to me. I've just came into work and heard, hey Sherman, I'm putting in my two weeks notice. 
And then when I ask what's going on, it's normally something like, hey, I wasn't looking in the market. Someone contacted me with an amazing opportunity that I could not reject. And trust me, you'd rather lose your best employees to anything other than money. Now, for some people, I know what you're thinking. You're probably wondering, as a small business, how in the world am I going to be able to pay what the market is paying? As a small business owner myself, I've been there, and I used to think the exact same thing. But you actually have more options than you think. First and foremost, if you can't afford to hire a single employee for what the market is demanding, what makes you think that'll change when you have 10 employees or 100 employees that are below the market? You see, finding the money to hire good employees is normally not a business stage issue, it's normally a budget or pricing issue. When you decide on the prices for your products and services and the budget for how you will allocate the money you receive, you should have already considered your cost of labor. If you haven't, then stop what you're doing right now and watch my video on small business budgeting. In short, you need to plan for growth in advance. I made the same mistake with one of our businesses. We grew quickly to over 30 employees, but we still did not have enough money to pay each employee what the market was paying. And unfortunately, as a result, we ended up having to reorganize our entire company and lay off most of our staff to rebuild back the right way. And honestly, I don't wish this task upon any business owner. Laying off my employees was one of the most darkest days of my entrepreneurial life. So on a more positive note, make sure you pay attention to the market when it comes to determining how to pay your employees and plan in advance. You can easily do this by using tools like Glassdoor to get a general idea of what the market is paying. And be sure to filter it down to your exact business size, area, and the years of experience you're seeking for your job to get the most accurate results. So there you have it. This is how you pay your employees from A to Z. Now let's quickly recap everything we went over in this episode. Today we answered three big questions. Number one, what's the difference between a contractor and an employee? Number two, what's the easiest way to set up a payroll system? And number three, what is the best way to set up compensation plans for your employees? As we discussed, the difference between an employee and a contractor all comes down to control. If you exercise full control over the individual working for you, then they are an employee. Next, we discuss the easiest ways to set up a payroll system. You need to set up the correct accounts with the appropriate federal and state departments. Then I recommended that you automate the payroll process with a platform like QuickBooks or Gusto, for example. Finally, we discuss the compensation plans and how much to pay your employees. The best compensation plan is a hybrid model that includes salary and additional bonuses to incentivize behavior towards your business goals. And in terms of how much to pay your employees, we recommend that you study your market to make sure you're not underpaying your employees and also not getting taken advantage of by overpaying your employees. So that's it for today's episode. I truly hope that you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please help me out by giving this video a thumbs up or comment below with any questions you have. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on other accounting content we're putting out to help you grow and manage your business. Until next time, take care.